And let's bring our next storyteller, Baria. Perfect. It's already at my height, so we're good. At the end of my senior year of high school, I was performing for the final night of our school's talent show, one of the more exciting events that occur in my suburb. I was doing slam poetry, if anyone's wondering. Um, and afterwards, in the sea of excited and proud families, I looked for my mom, a little blonde Russian woman whose smile is truly contagious. Тебе понравилось? Did you like it? I asked. Я не очень поняла, о чем ты говорила. Ну да, мне понравилось. Uh, I didn't really know what you were talking about, but yeah, of course, I loved your, um, uh, gestures. <laughs> okay, you know, this is a familiar story. My words were lost in translation. I guess I always know ahead of time that for all of my performances, my Russian immigrant mom, my biggest supporter in all of my creative endeavors will be there. Ironically enough, she's actually not here tonight because she had to work, so, um... <laughs> But she was there for all the school plays I was in with a translated script in hand, one that was printed by my sister. She sat there, glasses on the tip of her nose. She was marking where my lines were. You know, she showed up for the open mics and was there for the, for, for the performances of all types. But there were, and still are, really, so many things that just end up going past her. Moving to the United States when she was 40 years old was not an easy thing for my mother. I think, honestly, it's been the hardest thing she's ever done, even though she probably won't admit it. It was an abrupt and cruel change, kind of like when my school introduced Common Core. <laughs> Just kidding, it wasn't as bad. Um, you know, my dad got a student visa to study in Chicago, and then while he was getting his degree, my mom ended up winning a green card. And then I was born. And all of these things sort of happened within a year, and so really, I mean, there was no reason to go back to St. Petersburg and we started to establish life in the States, and everything started over. So I grew up in a bright and weirdly uh, intense community. I was upheld by a loud Slavic support system here in the Chicagoland area. There are a lot of us, in case you guys didn't know. Um, it was a system my mother was very actively a part of. I grew up surrounded by macho Russian men with the heavy accents. And the demographic of my community has an astoundingly high concentration of dad bods with the gold chain necklaces. You know what I'm talking about? Like, yeah, that should help you visualize it a little bit, I think. You know, I was supported by Russian women who radiate warmth, but who also never failed to tell me when they thought I was starting to look kind of uh, chubby, you know? Uh, and I grew up doing homework in the kitchen with the smell of borscht and potatoes and the pickled herring, of course. It's, filled my insides, and as I describe it, it is really such a stereotype, but, you know, I wouldn't change it for anything. And this was my life up until a year ago. And then 12 months ago, I moved from the sleepy western suburbs to the big city to go to college, just like every cliche in the book. I don't know if it's cliche that I said that, but I'm here. And college has really pushed me to be more social and talk about my roots. So whenever I talk to people about my ethnic background, which is inevitable because my name very clearly gives it away, I always end up spiraling into what my therapist calls um, an ongoing identity crisis. Uh, you know, I'm forced to explain my background, which then turns to me thinking about my purpose and what home means for me and my family and, you know, light stuff like that. So, again, I... I wouldn't change the way I grew up, but it was hard, though. You know, surviving off of thrift stores and garage sales when my peers flaunted their newly purchased clothes from department stores. It was hard never having help with homework or talking to insurance agents when I was eight years old when they would call on the phone and I would try to translate what the hell a deductible was. Like, I still don't really know what a deductible is, so... Uh, and, you know, growing up, throughout my time in middle and high school, I began to fall in love with the art of words and performance. And, you know, as lovely as it was, it felt, like, wrong. You know, it still feels wrong. Because I get to love the English language in a way my mother never will. And I get to experience a country and a culture that fits comfortably most of the time. 
uh, kind of like my favorite gray Doc Martens. But unlike American culture, my mom actually likes those shoes. Uh, which, by the way, for those of you with ethnic parents, you know that having them compliment you on any part of your physical appearance is literally the highest form of praise you can get. <laughs> and initially, when I was writing this, I didn't think I actually had the qualifications. You know, I was born here. I was automatically blessed with this title of American. But after some regularly scheduled existential soul searching, I think I figured out what my mom's deal is. You know, I think she lives through me. You know, that's why she's at my performances. And that's why she tells all of her fellow Russian friends in the community about her daughter's achievements at DePaul University. <laughs> you know, it's her own little form of rebellion, a sort of like breaking of the mold. It's a way to plug into a culture that she's just too scared of. You know, because she knows she'll be ridiculed. She'll be called lazy. She'll open her mouth and people will call her stupid. She knows they've done it before. And I think broken English really is something that is so, so beautiful, but it's also incredibly unfair for me to say that because I've never actually been the one speaking it. And so my mother, you know, this lover of linguistics and literature, a Russian grammar genius and a wonderful teacher, couldn't understand the poem that I wrote for her when I was in high school. And so maybe, I think that's why I don't let myself breathe sometimes and that everything I do needs to have this perfect edge because I'm proving to her and to myself and to both of my homelands that I'm worthy of the space that I occupy and that I'm worthy of being here because of the sacrifices that were made on my behalf. And so virtually everything I do bears this sort of extra weight, this like heaviness of the chance of failure because I don't want to fail. You know, they've done too much to have me fail. She has done too much to have me fail. Even though she does always say she's proud of me no matter what, you know. And I know that this is a familiar story to a lot of scared first generation college kids. And I don't know if any of them will hear this story, but I just want to remind them to be gentle with themselves. You know, that this, all of this is a new experience and that you are the embodiment of your parents' wildest dreams, really. And you deserve to be here, just like anybody else does. Also, don't forget to call your mom. Thank you. <laughs>